Rassica's here. So, regarding Splatoon lore, there's been one thing I've been very persistent about, and that is going off the information we have now. All mammals, except for two cats, are extinct in the Splatoon world. This includes marine mammals such as whales, orcas, dolphins, narwhals, you name it. As far as we know, and the Inklings know, they're all dead. However, I've found this idea does not sit right with many Splatoon fans, especially the part about marine mammals being extinct. I'll say it now, I do think that with the description of Splatoon 3 story mode mentioning mammals having been wiped off the face of the earth has proven me right, but despite that, I've still seen some people questioning this. Like, what if the phrasing implies only land mammals are extinct? Inklings still drink milk, so what's up with that? And what about Marina's narwhal landlord or all the logos featuring whales? And a big one I've seen is, what about scientific logic? Like, why would all the mammals go extinct? It doesn't make any sense. Understandably, this is a piece of Splatoon's lore that has a lot of confusion surrounding it, because the game itself doesn't really have much to clarify these points. So with my deep digging and crazy theories, I thought it'd be good to try and clear some things up once and for all. Before I really get into this, there's a couple of things I need to address real quick. One, I can already hear people going like, what about Return of the Mammalians? What if there was mammals launched into space that survived? Or if Mr. Grizz is a bear, wouldn't that prove you wrong? I'll talk about my theories and headcanons as I always do, but I'll say this is not what this video is about. The point of this video is to condense the existing information that we have regarding mammals in the world of Splatoon, and what I'm going against here is the concept of stable, known populations of mammals on Earth for 12,000 years following humanity's extinction. Like, for example, whales just casually living in the ocean, or narwhals having evolved onto land, or they're still being rats, not whatever the hell this is. And as far as I'm concerned and aware of now, the Judds are the only creatures that meet this criteria. Well, actually, not really. They're still alive, but it's one cat and it's clone. That's not really a stable population. The second thing is that sometimes, when I bring this up, there's someone who for some reason doesn't know what a mammal is. So to quickly explain, a mammal is a living creature that has hair at any point in its life, a backbone, breathes through air and not underwater, and nurses its young with milk. All of this criteria has to be met for something to be a mammal. No, Inklings are not mammals for having a belly button, and yes, I have seen someone say that. So, where did this there are no mammals piece of info come from? It's not stated super obviously in the game or anything. I mean, we have the sunken scroll that mentions flooding wiping out the creatures of the land, which does not automatically refer to mammals because not all mammals live on land. But from materials outside of the game, and from the words of the developers, it's been said a good amount of times. Of course, the most recent example is in the description for Return of the Mammalians, where it says, as far as we know, mammals have been wiped off the surface of the Earth. This is not the first time this info has been stated. There's a Famitsu interview with the Splatoon developers from back in 2015, where the interviewer asks, Why was Judd, who judges the matches, designed as a cat instead of a sea creature? And Splatoon director Hisashi Nogami says, Judd is a remnant of when the main characters were rabbits, and he's the only mammal left in the world of the squids. Judd's description in the first art book describes him as the only mammal. And then, in a Squid Research Lab post from 2017, it reads, According to our information from two years back, Judd was supposedly the squid world's only mammal. Just what happened in the intervening time. Of course, referring to Lil Judd being this only additional mammal. There's also an interview in English with Splatoon director Hisashi Nogami with Kotaku, where Nogami says, One thing we know about the world of Splatoon is that mammals are basically gone, so they don't eat beef or pork or the meat of mammals. This isn't all the times this all mammals are extinct lore has been stated, but the amount of times this has been said shows that this has been a very consistent part of Splatoon's world. I do think it's unfortunate that all the sources I pulled were outside of the game. I really think this is something that should have been made more clear in the game because I noticed that some people's reaction to Return of the Mammalians was, what do you mean all mammals are dead and not, oh shit, mammals are coming back. Even for people who know about this fact that mammals are supposed to be extinct in Splatoon, one common question I see is, 
If there's no mammals, how come they have milk? After all, there's an advertisement in Inkopolis Square with the cartoon crab pouring milk over cereal. And fun fact, this crab's name is Sarukani. I'm bringing this point up first because it's directly addressed in the Kotaku interview I just mentioned. The article reads, Nogami walked his inkling over to a corner in Gopala Square where a bright ad played for cereal. A crab chowed down on a bowl of milky carbs. There's no mammals, so whatever's being poured over the cereal might not be milk, Nogami laughed. So if it's not milk, what is it? The easy answer is that Inklings use plant-based substitutes. There's a piece of dialogue that mentions Judd trying to get coconuts from a tree, and there's some other mentions of coconuts existing, so there's one candidate, coconut milk. We also know for sure rice exists, so rice milk is an option. From boxes of cereal in Mako Mart, we know there's nuts, so that opens up the possibility of something like almond milk or cashew milk. Or maybe they use soy milk, as the existence of soy has been referenced several times, like how the Google Tuber is called the soy tuber in Japanese. The torpedo subweapon is based off of soy sauce pouches. And Marina mentions eating a dish of spinach steeped in a soy broth, etc, etc. Soy exists, and soy milk seems fitting, since after all, Splatoon came from blocks of tofu. Really, if you search up dairy-free milk or dairy-free cheese, you can get a pretty decent idea of what the Inklings use instead, because they do have access to a good variety of plants. If you want to get really weird with dairy substitutes, in concept art from Mako Mart showing off products in the store, we see squid cheese and organic ink butter, seemingly implying that ink works as a dairy substitute in the Splatoon world. The point is that there's plenty of things Inklings could be using other than mammal milk in their cuisine. It's pretty easy to explain. The next, and probably the most frustrating piece of evidence I see brought up to justify marine mammals just existing in the Splatoon world is Marina's Narwhal Landlord. This comes from a piece of dialogue from the Unicorns vs. Narwhal Splatfest from 2019, and god this has done so much damage to people's understanding of the Splatoon world and I hate it. Note the region that this Splatfest occurs in, North America and Oceania only meaning that all the dialogue for the Splatfest does not exist in the Japanese version of the game. As far as I'm concerned, if a piece of lore is only in localization, and especially if that info is at odds with what's been stated by the developers or in the Japanese version of the game, it's not canon. And Marina having a narwhal landlord is at odds with the numerous times it's been stated that there are no mammals left on Earth. Even if you apply the logic of, oh, what if it's only land mammals that are gone, well, congrats. Marina's narwhal landlord would have to live on land to be a land lord, thus making him a land mammal. He should not exist. Period. The English localization team is given a good amount of free reign, and some of the choices they make are fun and good, but some changes deviate far from the script and come back to bite them in the ass later on because it ends up being at odds with the lore. Like, there's that time they said that Agent 4 is two years older than Agent 3 when the opposite is true. And in the English version, Pearl seemingly knew Marina was an Octoling before Octo expansion. Pearl does not make any octopus jokes in her Japanese dialogue. Also, there's all these references to Pearl's voice having the power to break stuff in the Japanese dialogue before Octo expansion that was mostly removed from the English localization for some reason. In the Narwhal Landlord case, there was no script to try to stick to or deviate from to begin with. It was, again, made up by NOA localization. From these examples, I think it's clear that the Japanese Splatoon development team does not keep the localization team posted on all their future plans, including their plans here to make the fact that all mammals are extinct plot relevant. Now, while there's a good explanation for the milk and the narwhal landlord, there's another thing that makes people doubt marine mammals are supposed to be extinct. And that is all the marine mammals present on logos and referenced in product names. For example, there's a whale in the logo for a company behind the autobomb, as well as various boats and aircraft. There's also the company behind the nozzle noses, which has a dolphin with orca-like markings for a logo. Other places marine mammals have been referenced include, but are not limited to, the orca high tops, the whale knit sweater, and the logo for Mako Mart, which is called Humpback Whale Mart in Japanese. And god, this was a missed opportunity for the stage to be called Whale Mart in English as a play on Walmart. I mean, come on! So the view I've seen floating around is that these logos are either enough proof that marine mammals are still alive, or it just causes confusion. 
My take on it is that just because an animal has cultural relevance doesn't mean it's still alive. This is true in our world, I mean, people love dinosaurs. And of course, there's other extinct animals that hold their fascination, like saber-toothed cats and the dodo. And extinct animals having cultural relevance is something that we already know holds true in the Splatoon world. One big example is the tortoise and crane in Ecopolis Square. Did you know that tortoises and cranes are animals that are both canonically extinct in the world of Splatoon? When asked about this in a 2018 Famitsu interview, Splatoon art director Seito Inoue said, The way the Inklings view the relationship between cranes and tortoises is similar to our understanding of the relationship of the Tyrannosaurus and the Triceratops. They're extinct, but we're vaguely familiar with the image of them as a pair. And for a more casual example, we do have gear designed after zebra and leopard print. There's a description in Haikata Walker for both these pieces of gear that mention that they're based on an extinct species of herbivore and carnivore, respectively. Aside from those examples, there's not too many references to extinct land mammals, so why is there so many more casual references to sea mammals? My best guess is that creatures from the sea just have more cultural relevance than land animals in Splatoon. And maybe even more reverence. There's a few places where it's been stated Inklings hold a cultural respect for the seas that they came from, such as in the first art book, where the totem poles and camp triggerfish were made to honor their ancestors from the sea. There's also the Splatoon album jacket, which says, in reference to the Calamari incantation, which is the song of Inkling culture, the sea is our mother, the place where all life hatched from, and the place where there is no way to return. Since ancient times, this song has been filled with the swirling feelings of love and reverence towards the sea. So we can say with certainty that some extinct animals are relevant in Inkling culture, and that the Inklings respect the sea. Combine those two facts and it just makes sense that they would incorporate these cool ancient sea kaijus into their logos. Like, look at that. Cool as hell. Of course they would slap the markings of that thing on their gear and weapons. Going off this, one may still wonder, has a marine mammal ever outright stated to be extinct? Like, what if this means orcas are still alive, actually? Well, let's take a look at the Schellendorf Institute. This one piece of dialogue, Pearl says, Man, these monster bones blow me away, no matter how many times I see them. Marina replies with, Um, these are dinosaurs, not monsters. I think it's safe to assume that the giant bones on the ceiling are part of those monsters that Pearl is referring to. According to its name in Splatoon's files, these bones are orca bones. Why would Marina call an animal displayed in a history museum a dinosaur if it was still alive? She wouldn't. I know the T-Rex comparison was used earlier by the devs, but I think orcas would be the actual cultural equivalent to it in the Splatoon world. It's a badass, giant, ancient, predatory animal with sharp teeth that would eat the squids if given the chance. We can also look at this dialogue from Mako Mart. As I mentioned earlier, the Japanese name for the stage basically translates to Humpback Whale Mart. In this one piece of dialogue, Pearl asks, Hey Marina, what's a humpback whale? And Marina says, I heard it's the name of a species of mammal that lived long ago. It's in the store's logo. I'd say that's a pretty direct confirmation that whales are supposed to be extinct. I think there's enough proof that when they say all mammals are extinct, they really mean it. Minus the Juds, of course. But the question still lingers. How did all the mammals, including marine mammals, go extinct? I've seen people get tripped up on the concept of all mammals going extinct because it's too unrealistic for all the mammals to have just died from flooding, and therefore this still must exist on Earth. And I do agree that it is unrealistic. Like, realistically, I would expect rats, for example, to have survived because they're so numerous and resilient. But leaning too far into realism when thinking about how the world of Splatoon operates can be a dangerous trap to fall into. This is a game about tons of species of sea creatures collectively evolving and gaining sapience in the span of 10,000 years, a process that would, more realistically, take millions upon millions of years if it were to ever happen. In some ways, Splatoon is more grounded than other Nintendo series, but it's still a piece of fiction where things are done for the sake of gameplay, setting, and plot. And this is a setting where a couple of cats are highly important to the game's plot for being the last mammals, so headcanoning that rats or marine mammals still casually exist on Earth for the sake of realism conflicts with what's a core part of Splatoon's setting. 
Sorry if it was a bit left field for me to start talking about rats suddenly, but of course the key difference between rats and marine mammals is that for the rats, we do have a canonical reason for their extinction, even if it seems unrealistic. It was flooding. But we can't really apply this answer to an animal that spends its life in water. But also, I really don't think we can use the idea of marine mammals have more water and therefore more habitat to justify the idea of marine mammals still being around. So then, how could they have gone extinct? We have very little information about the Earth 12,000 years before the events of Splatoon, but with what we know, there's so many reasons we could imagine. For example, we know humans had no less than five world wars. We don't know what atrocities were committed in those wars at all, and we do know there was some weird shit going on like Antarctica getting nuked and a cat colluding with world leaders or something. Maybe the environmental protection laws were weaker on this version of Earth and some species were killed from overhunting or pollution. We can't forget that it wasn't just flooding that caused these mass extinctions, it was climate change. Aside from things like habitat loss, severe weather, changing of food sources, we don't know all of the catastrophic effects that could have on the ecosystems marine mammals live in. Or maybe the Earth's magnetic fields flipped and a wave of solar radiation wiped out the mammals. I am just spitballing ideas here, but my point is, is that coming up with some reason for marine mammals to go extinct in the craziness of the Splatoon world is really not impossible. But it is still interesting that we haven't gotten a direct reason in canon for how marine mammals went extinct. Perhaps this means the disappearance of marine mammals is something that has been intentionally left a little vague for some reason. Maybe plot reasons. And this is something that has been addressed once. In a tweet from over three years ago that I forgot about, haven't seen anyone bring up since then, and I didn't find again until I was about halfway done writing the script. It reads, A giant skeleton lying in an underground experimental facility. It seems to belong to a mammal that lived in the sea a long time ago. In the world of the squids, we hear that mammals on the surface became extinct due to a rapid rise in sea level. Did the mammals living in the sea die out with them? We're not sure, but at least nobody has witnessed them. I really think this is the biggest nail in the coffin to the idea that marine mammals casually exist on Earth. There's no dolphinlings, inklings aren't harvesting sea cow milk, they aren't going whale watching, and there's no possible way for Marina's landlord to be a narwhal, because for a very long time, nobody has seen a mammal on Earth in Splatoon, including sea mammals. The Judds are the only exception, of course. But since the Squid Research Lab themselves have called into question how marine mammals went extinct and are purposely withholding this information from us, then that could mean this is information impactful to Splatoon's story. So if, and a big if there, marine mammals were to still exist in Splatoon, it would have to be some weird important plot thing, like they were Jurassic Parked back into existence, or they were sent off into space, or they lived in secrecy somehow. By the way, what's depicted here is a whale fall, which is a vital part of deep sea ecosystems. When a whale dies, it sinks to the bottom of the sea and all the creatures living down there have a party. It can take about a hundred years for these bones to completely disappear, which is not a long time in the grand scheme of things. Like, oh, would that mean that there being whale bones mean that this whale died recently, and therefore whales still exist out in the seas in the Splatoon world? I would say no to that, unless weird plot things happen, because all the information pointing towards otherwise. Plus, the Deep Sea Metro is designed to be like a glimpse into the past, and there's some weird temporal distortions and giant floating objects. A whale skeleton being down there for way longer than it realistically should is the least of our worries here. Throwing in this random headcanon here, since whales are supposed to be extinct, then whale falls would no longer be happening. What if the lack of whales is what led to these deep sea creatures to evolve onto land and seek new food sources? Just food for thought. Moving on. What's interesting to note is that this tweet was from 2018, not long after Octo Expansion's release. We don't know how long Splatoon 3 has been in development, but maybe this hints that a mammal-centric plot has been planned for a long time. And maybe they have been toying with the idea for marine mammals to be a thread leading to that. Since there's so little we know about Return of the Mammalians, we can only speculate how, if at all, marine mammals could tie into it. But in this video, I don't want to focus too much on baseless theories. Actually, wait, I have one. 
So as part of the Splatoon collaboration with Jamstack, there are these research vessels studying the deep sea around the metro. The Jamstack website speculates that these research vessels are targeting the underground world of Octo Expansion to learn more about the past and to learn more about the sea level changes and the rapid evolution of marine life. They also call into question, who is doing this research? Could say it's probably just scientists in the Splatoon world or something, it's just for the sake of the collab, whatever. Now another part of this collab was that there was in-game gear, the Oceanic Hard Hat, released through Grisco. As I talked about in my Grisco video, I speculate Grisco has some kind of arrangements with the companies in-universe in order to get gear from them. Going back to these research vessels, there's not a lot of them around the metro, but one of these research vessels is looking right at the whale bones. Now who would be interested in research about mammals? And maybe trying to revive them or something? Hmm... In conclusion, there's so much evidence pointing towards that as far as we the audience know and those living in the Splatoon world know, all mammals, including the marine ones, are extinct, with two cats as the only exception. This is a fact we have to accept for the sake of Splatoon's story. However, there's still a bit of mystery surrounding the exact circumstances of marine mammals going extinct. So if they just so happen to be around, it would have to be because of some crazy plot things. Will Return of the Mammalians be the source of said crazy plot things to bring back marine mammals? We don't know. I'd been really against the concept of more mammals existing in Splatoon because I thought it would diminish the significance of the Judds being the last mammals. But I think what I really had a problem with was the idea of mammals casually existing without a good plot reason. And it looks like Return of the Mammalians is going to be that plot reason and may actually upplay the importance of the two Judds. I'm still hoping that it's just artificial freak of nature mammals and not a worldwide mammal revival, and that Mr. Grizz is not a bear, but let's see how this plays out. Thank you to my patrons for your direct support, and thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a bit since I last posted a lore video, but it's 2022, Year of Splatoon 3, and I have lots of ideas I want to get out before the game's release. Hope you stick around for that, and if so, I will see you next time.